Shout out to BioLite, uh, the IV in a bottle. When you drink one of these BioLites in 30 minutes or less, it is exactly like getting hydrated from a IV. It is also like drinking six sports drinks, uh, the electrolytes, and one of these equals six and a half sports drinks. If you are dehydrated and you need something to drink, go to BioLite. They have four different flavors, citrus, berry, tropical, and melon. They're all delicious. Make sure it's cold. It tastes nice and crisp on a hot day. Go to Amazon or drinkbiolite.com and use code REALTALK. That's code REALTALK for 10% off your first order. Again, go to Amazon or their website at drinkbiolite.com. All right, gang. We have, uh, oh, this, is, this is stuck. Matthew Barham Luke came on the show today for the boys. This is stuff. Flip the hair. All right, I got you. I'm not flipping the hair. Fresh, fresh haircut. Fresh haircut, got the fade, but what's up, you bunch? Um, today we had on um, Matthew Luke, who was Coach Miles Luke. O-line, Coach Luke. The, it was my old O-line coach here. Um, learned a lot from him. Uh, still means a lot to me to this day. Uh, so it was great to have him on. And today we talked about um, our favorite college football rivalries to start off with. Which me and Gody actually agreed how many times? Three times? Twice. 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 And we're not pushing it. But yeah, me and Gody actually agreed today. Um, we talked about his career, his upcoming, uh, who he looks up to in coaching, and uh, his reason to get out of coaching and everything around that. So, it's anything you got? His uh, his oldest son Harrison was here. We got a little surprise appearance from the from the big man. Also, shout out to the dogs volleyball team. They just upset the eight seed. Uh, Townsend in the NCAA tournament, which we had streaming right here. Go dogs! Shout out to my fiance. Uh, drink BioLite if you're ever thirsty, and rub your meat with some uh, fire and flavor. Appreciate y'all. That coach up in Athens got them boys playing pretty good ball. Anyway, I love you, son. Go dog. Hey. We all get our hair. <laughs> you say the light make my hair look even more gray. That's what I mean. Dude, appreciate it, uh, Harrison. Thank you. You're tan. You've been at the beach. You're like, what's? what's no, I've been at the beach. I just, just been golfing. I golfed. I walked nine holes. There. there you go. Did you really? Yeah. What'd you shoot? I shot four. Living the life. I'll never forget. Uh, <laughs> man, I think we were oh, like second week of fall camper. One of the one of the stressful times in the season, and Coach Harley mentioned that you texted some of them and were like, "Hey, what are y'all doing today?" And you're like, "I'm on the golf course golfing." <laughs> Did you do that? I don't remember it happening oh, just like that. They oh. texted me, asked them what I was doing. I told them, I, "No way would I ever." All of us were like, "Oh, that dog <laughs> living life right now." <laughs> I went and tried to swing a golf club today in the golf simulator, and my shoulder was not going for it. Can't wait to see that when he pulls up the footage from the uh, had camera. Tea. I had Tate over when he first got to the house, and he was took Harrison's bat and it was hitting off the tee, cracked, up, broke my son's bat. Off the tee. Are you serious? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually hilarious. Whatever we want to do, when I'm gonna have you come over and hit it, and we'll just take it back. We'll take it. We'll send it back. What kind of bat do you swing right now? What do you like? Yeah. Heck yeah. Big they just they just went, they went from drop five. This will be BB course. This will be the top three three. This will be the first. I was a big Dean Marini guy when I played. What's the one you want now, though? He's so, like, I'm swinging the goods, but that, like, it's a little bit top heavy, though, right? Yeah, so what's the what's the one that so you? So they're swinging that they like a hazardous. Mm, I got you. Mm-hmm. So like the, they like sponsor the high school. I never so I was a big D Marini guy, and then uh, my junior year of high school, someone just gave me an Adidas bat, and it felt like a golf ball. Like it was just like, you know how there's the the little just divots on a golf ball mm-hmm. it was like that all the way up the bat and it was awesome i loved it and it was legal and i just kept using it an adidas bat yeah and then i went to uh east coast pro which was like a showcase thing with some pro teams and they gave us a free adidas bat and i was like i'm just gonna keep using these bad boys so all right so coach Luke, thanks for being on with the boys uh so you're from gulfport mississippi is that right gulfport. went to yep. gulfport high school that's right uh talk about you know growing up obviously grew up in a football family uh, what was that like for you growing up? Um, yeah, it was good. My dad, uh, my dad played at Ole Miss, so we grew up with, you know, his helmet right above the encyclopedias. Y'all don't know what encyclopedias are. <laughs> Easy. It's like old school, old school Google. You know, if you want to look at something, you had to look at this. Oh, by the encyclopedias, my dad's helmet had Ole Miss helmet, Ole Miss stuff all in our room, and uh, that's where he met my mom. And so I guess my brother was seven years older than me. So he went to Ole Miss in 87, ended up playing both sports. He was baseball, football player. So I would go. Dog. Yeah, he was was good. 
And so we, we would drive up there. It was, it's five hours from Gulfport to Oxford because Gulfport's all the way on the coast and Oxford's at the, mm-hmm. at all the way almost to the top. So it was about five hour drive. So we'd make that, that trip and go watch him play. Uh, so that, that was, so I grew up in the Grove and grew up wanting to do that. My sister is five years older than me. Uh, she'll be happy if she watches this podcast. She says she always gets left out, but she's, she, uh, so she was a lawyer. Uh, she went to Ole Miss as well. So, and then I was last and I, I was the baby of the family. And then I graduated in 95 and I played for now Senator Tom, Tommy Tuberville. He was my, go. uh, he was my, he was my coach there. And then, uh, Hugh Nall, who was the center on the 1980 national championship team at Georgia, he was my position coach at Ole Miss. Wow. So that's kind of my first uh, – Taste uh, of Georgia. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, it's easy to say you were a uh, a rebel. You were born and bred a rebel. I was. Uh, I, that, was that was a huge uh, – you know, it was a dream of mine. When your dad played there and, you yeah. know, your brother played, that's all I wanted to do. So when I, when I ran out of that tunnel, that was um, – Shoot, that was like a dream come true. I didn't, you know, I was just happy to be on the team. I didn't even Heck care. Yeah. Then, uh, but it was, uh, you know, shoot, it was a good run. Got a chance to play center and uh, got, I think I started, I don't know, 33 games or something like captain that. Captain you yeah, last year? Captain my last year. And What was the, uh, it was what, was it 90, what years did you, what year did you graduate? So, 99, uh, 2000? Well, there's some, there's some discrepancy on what year I actually graduated. <laughs> I could I was, I was there in 95. I couldn't figure out exactly. Yeah, 99-ish is, okay. when I, is when I graduated. <laughs> I actually, I actually received my degree when I was uh, at Murray State. Hmm. So, okay. I, I uh, – Because you were a GA? Well, no. So, I so I played all four years. I okay. played my first four. I didn't redshirt. So, I played my first four years. And then my fifth year, um, Tuber, Tuberville left – after my last my last regular season game, he left and went to Auburn. Um, said, you know, I'm leaving here in a pine box, and then he left the <laughs> next day. And then uh, so that was the kind of the pine box joke. Uh, but but he yeah, he left, and then Coach Cutcliffe came in and mm. coached our bowl game, and that's where I met Coach Cut. And so we kind of got together. That's kind of how my coaching career started. I was going to go work for my dad. I was, had a business degree. Really was going to go. What work was your for my dad? dad? What was your dad? Uh, he, he was a, he's a builder. He was a commercial contractor. Oh. Um, down the coast, he worked for a company called J.W. Puckett, still there. Then him and his college roommate started uh, a company in Tupelo, which is up north of Mississippi, uh, called Southland Construction. So I was going to go work for them. They actually had an office already, and I was going to go do that. And Coach Cut, getting ready for the bowl game, he, he called me in there. and was like, you know, what do y'all call this play? Because he said, what I want to do is I want to – I want to run my place, but I want to call it what y'all call it. That way, y'all don't have to mm. learn a whole new system before the ball game, which I appreciated. Mm. So we kind of went through the whole offense. He was like, "Well, do you know any of the protections?" I was like, "Yeah, I know the protections." And he was like, well, "What do y'all call this?" I told him. He's like, "Well, you know some of the routes." I was like, "Yeah." And so we just went through the whole game plan. That's awesome. And uh, we ended up beating uh, Deuce McAllister was our tailback. I think he rushed for I don't know. Much the other. We yeah, yeah, he was good. And uh, so we ended up winning my last game, which was kind of cool. And that's. And he was like, I think you need to give this a shot. You what was to- what was uh, Coach Cut like? Um, he was awesome. You know, he was um, very, very knowledgeable. He was very um, uh, more, much more like a military. Like he was uh, very, very disciplined, very structured. Um, and uh, you know, he came had a Tennessee background. He was actually a high school coach in Birmingham and mm-hmm. Johnny Majors was watching his practice in high school and he was so impressed he offered him a job as a part time coach. Wow. So that's how he kinda got into it. So but he's a uh, yeah, he he was awesome. So he he's the he's kind of the he kinda of taught me into doing it. It's a great guy to talk and, into uh, doing it. So there's a guy named Joe Panunzio who is with the Eagles now, uh great dude. Um, he was on Tuberville staff and he went to Auburn. Well he got the head job at Murray State. Mm-hmm. So my so ninety nine, well I'm in my fifth year, I'm finishing up um, so, and y'all will understand this, but I was going to be, I was going to work for my dad. So I was in business and then I went into engineering for like one semester and it was awful. I hate it. <laughs> it, it, was, it, was ter- it was terrible. So I was like, and so then, so, so I ended up being a semester behind because I went to engineering. I went back to business cause I was going to do like, um, probably like business finance or marketing or something like that. Somewhere I could be involved in, uh, sports, but. So that's that's kind of what uh, what I did. So I was I was a year behind because I had switched to that engineering, and so I'm trying to think what I 
what I was trying to get at. Fire and Flavor is a local Athens company that loves supporting the dogs. Founded by UGA alumni Davis and Jenna Knox, this company is your go-to resource for all things grilling. They got dry rubs, barbecue pellets, charcoal, and the new and innovative Hero Portable Grill. Fire and Flavor gets it done. And find their products at fireandflavor.com or at your local Striplings, Publix, or Lowe's Home Improvement. Use their code TAILGATE, that's TAILGATE, for 25% off on their website. Again, their website is fireandflavor.com. Use the code TAILGATE for 25% off. So I finished in 99, but I was a student assistant. I wasn't a graduate assistant. I was okay. kind of a student. Uh, but I didn't have any eligibility left because all my buddies were, about, were my age. They had redshirted. Mm -hmm. So they were playing. So while they finished up that semester, I was helping coach. And they let me have a you know kind of a headset on the sideline. Because when you're a yeah. student, you don't have any rules. You can do whatever you want. So I was on the sideline making adjustments, kind of like a GA would do. And uh, so that's kind of my start. And then Coach Panunzio called me and said, do you want to be the offensive line coach? I was right out the at, gate. At Murray State. I was, tw I was 22 years old. Dude, and he was, and talk he, about getting into it like that. Man. And, uh, so that was kind of my big break. I was like, yeah. Uh, I don't think the offensive coordinator at Murray State was very fired up. He's like, <laughs> who's my line coach going to be? He's like, well, he's old. not working yet. He's uh, he's still playing. He's Were like, there what? kids older than you there? Um, so when I got there, there was there was several. Um, there was probably the seniors <laughs> were the, the same age as me. Yeah, the fifth year. How'd that dynamic work? Yeah. Um, you know what, they, they, I think all players, um, once they figure out you can help them and that you're a good guy, they'll they'll work with you. I mean, it was obviously right when I first got there, in spring ball, they're like, who's this guy? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, but once they figure out, you know, hey, this guy, you know, and I, and I was, you know, and I, I knew, I thought I knew football. Uh, yeah. But, you know, you're just kind of getting started and kind of trying to figure it all out. But don't it, know it was what you all know. Made $12,000. Um, and I think my – I lived in a duplex. Nice. Uh, I think my rent was three hundred, like three hundred dollars a month. So it was uh, at, at, at Murray State. We painted the uh, painted the offices. You know, mm -hmm. do it yourself. We type filmed. Job. We, filmed uh, we didn't have any butt shots. We filmed middle drill off the back of a pickup truck. No and, way. Uh, <laughs> that is awesome. You know, you know, if we wanted to get really fancy, we'd get one of those lifts up in the end zone. Mm -hmm. and that way, we could at least get a butt shot. It's like I just I did a butt those. shot. I love so, how I call it middle drill too. That's that's awesome, dude. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So we had we had that. Um, but yeah, so I, I did that for uh, I guess a year and a half, and then uh, Rich Basaccia left Ole Miss and went into the NFL, and that opened up a spot at Ole Miss. So Coach Cut called me, and I went uh, went to Ole Miss in the end of 2000, and that's so that's awesome. where I kind of started my. I was you know 23 years old in SEC and God, making fifty five thousand dollars a year. I was all fired up. Rolling, man. <laughs> so, uh, I was going to rent a condo on the square. My dad was like, "No, you're not. <laughs> you're going to buy. You're going to buy a house." So I was like, "All right." So, so uh, uh, so you're 23 at Ole Miss. At what point do you meet your now wife, Ashley? How did how did you? Okay, so we um, she went to Mississippi State. I hate to say that. Oh, like, mm. like publicly, but she did. She after went. after visiting there, I would 100 percent go to school there. After flying out there and seeing the land around oh, there, dude. it was beautiful. <laughs> it was beautiful. Pretty loud, too. That place got rocking. It did. Yeah. There's cowbells. God, it's so annoying. Yeah, it is very annoying. But uh, so, yeah, we met. She was, she graduated from Mississippi State, and she worked with special needs kids, uh, early childhood development, like infants to three-year-olds. Okay. And at, in Oxford, that's uh, – actually, from Oxford. Her mom and dad live there. Both her brothers live there. So from Oxford. She's from Oxford. Yeah. Went to Starkville. Yeah, well, I think that's pretty common – Really? Just trying to get out of you know you, yeah, you, you, you grew up there so just trying to you know, go Vegas. somewhere different so that, that would be the only reason I could think of I don't know why. any other good reasons yeah to get out there. that's right uh, I hear but yeah so she she went there and came back and then we ended up ended up meeting there that's awesome now you got two kids two boys yep. Harrison and Coop we got Harrison in the house with us yeah, come Harrison, on Harrison, get over here big boy yep. come on come right, come right <laughs> with the camera <laughs> yeah we'll yeah, edit we'll you we'll edit you out later. <laughs> yeah. Love the George Sushi. You're rocking. Yeah. Big uh big baseball and football guy right here, right? Getting ready to get into baseball season. What position do you play? Uh, middle one still. So. Yeah? What uh what's your favorite uh pro baseball team? And then give us your favorite player. Um You better give the right answer right here. So <laughs> I, I like the Braves. Okay. Yeah. I'm a, I'm, what a, I don't know a good player. Okay. You don't have a favorite player that you're in the backyard emulating? You're imitating Harper. Like Harper, that's a great answer. What would be? Did you ever watch baseball growing up? Oh yeah. What, who's your Who's your guy? Um, 
Tate's got a good swing. Tate would be good. Tate. I, okay. That's my biggest regret. But you hit, you hit bombs, though, right? Mm-hmm. You had, Did you play? You had a good swing. Mm-hmm. I touched 91 my sophomore year. Yeah. Then quit because I had. Oh, whoever really you quit. Yeah. Um, you could play. Granted, you're a pretty good football player, too. So Growing up, probably John Smoltz, just because I met him when he really? came to pitch for the Rome Braves. His daughter. <laughs> yep. How about that? <laughs> she goes She goes here. Really? Yeah. Huh. She went to Eagles Landing, I think. Uh, and yeah. then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't, let's not talk about them. Why? Well, I went out there. Put out Darlington. Oh, we we yeah. we went out there, third Golly. round of the playoffs. Every single one of their linemen are my size. Their running backs at Eastern Carolina ran like a four four in high school, and they just boat raced us. <laughs> the first play of the game, their center took Kate Brock, who was our newest man, pushed him like a prowler fifteen yards down the field. But he came down up. He said, "This will be a long one." <laughs> I stepped on a screw in the locker room before the game. Oh so I had a hole gosh. in the bottom of my foot. So yeah, that's not a, that's a bad start. To <laughs> it's not day. yeah, not a great not a great start mm-hmm. there. That's for sure. Well, my answer for my favorite player growing up was Chipper Jones. That's that's my go to. I do. We play with football games in my backyard. My family. Every time I was trying to right and lefty, just like Chipper. Mm-hmm. You gotta go. You gotta go, Dale Murphy. You have oh, to. Oh, yeah, Dale Murphy. Dale's a good in, one. In the, in the Powder Blues, man. Dude, the Powder Blues. They that's gotta bring pretty, it back, man. Maybe Glenn Hubbard, but I'm gonna go Dale Murphy. I don't know. I saw so. Chipper Jones play for the Rome Braves too. Brian McCann. Really? Mm-hmm. Every time they had a pro player there, I went and watched. Wait. Oh, oh like a reset. I was about to say. Oh, yeah. Okay. What? Because Chipper got to the bigs in like 98. So mm-hmm. I was going to like re- so re- yeah, rehab. Yeah, rehab. 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 In the uh, so this, NCAA this tournament. Is, this is proof that he is actually watching. I am watching, <laughs> if you're wondering, Lex. Uh, they're up two sets to one on the eight seed, and that'll be a big upset. So, uh, hopefully they can pull it off right here. They're up 7-4 to four or 7-3, to three, uh, Townsend. And then if they win, they play Texas. So, this is this is a tournament? Like this it is. is this, the, this, this is, is the, the tournament. This is the deal. Yeah, okay. this is the right. – they, uh, they finished like 27-5 and five or something like that. Uh, something like that. They – had a good year, made it to the tournament. I think first time since we've been here. So because they've been yeah, my pretty... sister's uh, daughter Emma plays volleyball. Really? Yeah, that's a How big deal. She? They're traveling all over the place. Oh, dude, it's unbelievable. Yeah, they, they're traveling. It's like travel baseball. Orlando, yeah. yeah, it's crazy. It's they're crazy. playing everywhere. So back to baseball. Speaking of uh, the trick play we were talking about earlier, give us. There's obviously a story that you guys have experienced uh, with six four three at the trick play. Give give me. There's got to be a story behind that, right? For you. All right. When did you experience it? Like 12 years, I was like standing on first base and like. Oh, so it happened to you? I, I was out there. The kid that happened, he was on second. So okay, I was just, right. like, watching. It was, and like they like say that they were throwing him in the outfield. And they, like, but the, this was the bottom of the last inning oh, in the yeah. championship game. How, how many runs were y'all down? Uh, One. It's like we had the winning run. So we had the tying run on second and the oh. winning run on first. And so what'd y'all call it? Y'all called it something, right? Y'all uh, it. So when we were younger. Hmm. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. We called it Louie, two to your left. Louie, two to your left. And so anytime you ever heard that, it was like, all right, it's on. Let's go. And so basically what you do is I'll show you come set. So basically it's like it's a trick play. Like they said, bottom of last inning, you're up by a run or two runs. You've got to get it out. So it could be a guy in first and third or a guy in first and second. Whatever you do, you, pitcher comes set, puts the ball in the glove, makes a fist. The guy at second, you turn around, pick off the guy at second, and think like you throw it. Everybody in the middle dives, goes crazy. The outfielder like starts running back, like the ball's overthrown. Of course, the yeah. guy on second's like, and then you try and get him, yeah. right? So that obviously happened to you guys in the championship game. Did y'all did you go crazy? Uh, I kind of didn't know what was going on, <laughs> and then like and it was very like at the end, like like I it was all happened. chaotic, and then the pitcher just like went and tagged the guy, and like it was like the game was over. And I was just like, listen to this. What just happened? <laughs> so my my ten U year. We are at the Florida Georgia tournament and we're playing some team from Miami and it was just a chaotic game and a lot of just Spanish customers being yelled, a lot of customers in English being yelled. And so, you know how you do, uh, you got there and throw before the game, guys are throwing mm-hmm. a warm up, whatever. So apparently a couple of balls got left in center field pregame. Bottom of the six, last inning, we're up one. Louie, two to your left. Louie, two to your left. All right, here we go. I'm at third base, like getting ready to roll. It was second and third, two outs. Pitcher comes set, boom, fake pickoff. Everybody starts diving. Well, there's three balls in the outfield from warm up. So the kid on second and third, they look and they see the ball, balls in the outfield. 
start taking off, boom, tag the on third, game over. We end up winning the whole like Georgia Florida tournament. And uh, the entire Miami parents and coaching staff so they're not lost it. it. It just went absolutely eight crap. It was absolutely insane. So yeah, it was uh it's yeah, a cool we, play. we experienced it. So six four three is still running that uh, yeah. Louie to your left. I so love it. I next love time it. we play him when I hear that, I'm gonna, <laughs> we're gonna call timeout. <laughs> I love it. All right, big dog. Well, I appreciate you being on. Thank you. Good luck this baseball season, all right? All right. Go ahead a few bombs. All right, so uh, we do a couple uh, – we, we made up a word, segmental segments. Uh, so yeah, I like that. Every That's segment so we do two – segment or every episode we do uh, two segments. Our first one is called the fist pump feature of the week. So you think about like Tiger Woods. He sinks a putt, gives a fist pump. So okay. a fist pump moment of the week meaning what was something this week that happened that was just awesome that was worthy of a fist pump we got the putter where's the putter yep so something we'll start with tate yeah i was using it earlier. sinking uh, up draining putts that's kind of hill's got a nice little kind of change it up on him over there i've never seen that before that's, it did it tricked you well you're getting a little cocky <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, did you bring the curves? The, the yeah, yeah, he, oh, cur- yeah, he, cur- it's unbelievable. Yeah, he curved it all. Yeah, so it's unbelievable. Made it, made it much tougher. All right, Tate. You, you're you're, 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 you're deep in thought the, over I'm there. I'm trying to decide between two. Anything happen good in team run? <laughs> no, team actually, yes. That okay, was, was one of them. <laughs> give it, so, give it to me. one defensive lineman that we're not very fond of on the offensive line, I'm sure you can guess who it is. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can cut this up. <laughs> yeah, nobody's very fond of Especially on he almost killed me his first day on campus. So he uh, he really enjoys lining up offsides, like six inches. Like our hands are almost touching. And me and Moore McClendon both look at him like, you need to back up. He's like, no, nah, I'm not backing it up, whatever. So we're running inside zone to the left, so me and Warren are on the backside. A little B action. We completely just ignore the linebacker, and we take Bear about 15 yards downfield and put him on his neck, and we were just those – Probably the best moment of my week. Yeah, that's a fist pump. So we gotta get the fist pump. What was that? Take putter. <laughs> Give us a little fist pump. Bang! Fist pump right there. That's first level first, Tate. First, mm-hmm. first, first level, level first. first. That's it. I love it. We still hardly <laughs> use that all the time now. Does all, he? All the time. Hardly can't use first level. Well, he first. gives you credit when he talks okay, about good. it. At least, <laughs> every single time. At least he copyrights. He's like, this is a Malu right? term, and I love it. First level first. <laughs> that's right. That's right. What you got next, Coach? Like. Now that I'm retired, I guess I can say I hope nobody loses respect for me over this, but I I have to give I have to give it to the World Cup and Team USA okay. advancing to the knockout stages. Come on, like, that's mm-hmm. for sure a fist bump. Like it's and, mine. and was it wasn't going to be yours. Yeah, that's a great okay. one. Though. I love and, it. And Pulisic like giving his body up, going oh. to the goal, and I thought that was uh, so. That's definitely my. I love it. We of course, bump. of course, all three games have been at two o'clock, so we've been in the heart of meetings while they've been going on. So we haven't been able to see any of it. <laughs> yeah. But there's been a couple of phones in meeting rooms in the corner of the, the meeting room really? with the, the okay. game on. Yep. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so we've been so. keeping track. We play uh, Netherlands, Netherlands, right? Saturday. Saturday off. at 10. We should yeah. get be able to see the first, mm-hmm. like, 15 minutes of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> That's about it. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that. That's, uh, the game's at 4, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So pretty young. we be kicking off about 12. We should see a little bit of it. Team walks probably around 10, 10 30. I don't know. Yeah. At least uh, yeah. we'll the, the team walk man in, in uh, Kentucky was oh, a wow. brisk one. Oh my it gosh. Was I mean, it was like 13 degrees, windy. Like it. That was the, oh. like, I didn't play that game. Standing on the sideline, I forgot to put Vaseline on. I, I was about to die. <laughs> I was freezing. So you do, you do you put the Vaseline on or do you have somebody? I put it on before I put my gloves on. Usually, before your gloves, okay. I get the little. I'm always interested in, gloves, in that. So put it on. That'd yeah, be trouble, it, yeah. Because the thing is, is you put it on before warm ups. It's gone after warm ups. Yeah, that's a good point too. Just re- but, reapply. Sounds green. Uh, my fist pump feature of the week. Mm. Sorry for taking your. No, you're good. You're good. You can have my second one. That's a good one. What's your second one? Spiders. Spiders today was on. Un- that's a great call, Tate. We were in Spiders today instead of pads. It's first time, no, second, second time all year that we were in Spiders, and it was uh, refreshing. You two agreed on something yeah. for the first time in forever, I think. Absolutely. You're asking what Spiders are? I know what it is, but for Yeah. So, for your, spiders for are 
So shoulder pads have the hard plastic outer shell. It's just shoulder pads without that part. So it's, so it's really light. Bad. Hitting's to a minimal. It's all about fits, speed. And we Did have, you still go knee braces? Or? We, we didn't go knee braces on Thanksgiving. And that was Coach Smart's like Thanksgiving gift to us. And we got a text today from Coach Smart saying, y'all have knee braces on today. <laughs> <laughs> like all the seniors and upperclassmen were going throughout the locker room last Thursday, like telling every single underclassman, you better not touch your knee braces. I don't care what they say. We're going out there without knee braces. So everybody went there without knee braces. And that was the only time that happened. So... So, uh, let's see. Let's go, Hibs. Let's let's get a guest appearance here on the uh, fist pump feature of the week. Give us something. Oh, you had a busy week. There's got to be something uh, fist pump oh, worthy. I got this. Oh, I got one. So we found out that we have uh, not one but two suites for the SEC championship game that we're going to be able to have some people in. So I will be so watching definitely. you guys from the comforts of uh, a suite <laughs> in the Mercedes Where is it? Stadium. Uh, I don't know. Up high. So I'll just, I'll just wave up there. Yeah, just, the just give me a wave. Give me a wave. Don't forget I'll, about. I'll give you one of these. Yeah. <laughs> right. Mention this to the folks up there. Get them on here. You know? Oh yeah. Well, I'll play play some of the TVs in there. Yeah. Do it. I just like. Get That's actually a great idea. What is episode this? by episode. Oh, on loop. Yeah, on loop. I got sixteen of these bad boys. <laughs> That's, a great, <laughs> That's a great idea. Oh, that would be hilarious. Yes, yeah, so that's a little segment we do. Every week. We try to, I don't know, curse yeah. and positivity. We gotta love it. Yeah. Cut, to back to uh, back to your career. So, uh, you go to Ole Miss, uh-huh. uh, late '90s. What was the the recruiting process like back then? Because now, I mean, it's just a whole another animal. Yeah, you know, it was still like I'll say this. Like I remember, uh, even at Ole Miss, that May, like you got one phone call in the month of May, and that was a huge deal. Like that's when you were calling a junior that was about to be a senior. Like that was your one call. Like you got to go out spring recruiting and like after the, you know, as you went out on the road, like you had your list, you're going out to watch juniors that are going to be seniors the next year. Like, so, I mean, that was a big deal. You got one phone call the month of May. That was the first time like you were like, like you were getting, I mean, if you got the mom and dad's number and and all this stuff, I mean, you're getting it all for the first time. And Hmm. it's just sped, everything has sped up so much. Um, but I just I remember that like that one phone call in May was like an hour and a half long, like because you're trying to get everything, like you're trying to find out, like like now, I mean because of social media and like even like I think text messages didn't start. I'm dating myself like till around like oh like six oh seven really? like in that range like that's when text mess and that's when you started to communicate yeah. and then text messages were like were like a phone call, so you couldn't do it. And then it was like a written message, so then you could send as many text messages as you want. So and it, text messages cost money. Correct. Text. That's and right. So that's why they made the rules, because yeah. these kids were getting bills. Yeah. They were like thousands of dollars, because the coaches were just like yeah. texting all day. Yeah, because we'd be in meetings, you got GAs firing mm-hmm. out text messages all, all day, and they're getting charged for it. So <laughs> yeah. it was just a bad, <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a bad, it was a bad, uh, bad deal. But they, but I don't know, just, so it, it has, it has changed a lot, and just the uh, just as far as the speeding up process and having to, and there, like I said, there's good and bad about both because you were a lot more, like you knew a lot more about the uh, the kid. You watched them as they got older. Now you're making you know offers, you know, at a, such a early freshman. Yeah, school. I mean, you're having to you're having to project more than you had to back back. Mm-hmm. In That's the a day. great point. So, from the coaching side of things, then how do you, how did you handle the last twenty years of balancing the life of coaching recruiting and family how does that all tie together yeah i mean you just uh like again to be good at anything it takes time like if you want to be a good coach it takes time if you want to be good at recruiting you got to spend time if you want to be a good dad you want to be a good husband like it's all about time and 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 trying to uh manage it and like when y'all would see harrison and cooper or ashley come up to the facility like that's how you try to multitask as much as you can, mm-hmm. and uh, you know Kirby was really good. You know, trying to sneak out whenever whenever he can to go watch the end of a game, or and you know Coach Hartley does that. You know, mm-hmm. you see him trying to go out and see and see Tuck. I mean, whenever he can. So Absolutely. you're just trying to, um, you know, you try to manage it and do and do the best you can. And it's it's definitely um, it's definitely tough, but it but it is doable for sure. That schedule is crazy. I remember coming in because I always wanted to be a college coach. That was kind of my dream. And then, man, coming in and seeing the just the hours and the sacrifices you guys yeah. put in, it's unbelievable. Yeah, like Coach Searles, I think it was Tuesday night, sent us a text about Cole Kubelik talking about 
LSU's front seven, like how he thinks they're going to slow down our run game, whatever. At like 12 o'clock, and we're like, Coach, what are you still doing up? Go home, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> go, go to sleep, Coach. So, yeah, so, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday night, um, is it's those are late nights. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Wednesday after practice, you get to go home. But Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, you're up there. I mean, they're, you know, it's 12, 1 o'clock because then you got to have a presentation. So, like, for Tuesday, like, so Monday night, you're up there all night trying to get the base run, play action, base protections. And then, then you come in Tuesday, you watch the practice. And then, and then Wednesday, you're trying to get the, you know, third down package, mm-hmm. the red zone package, and all that. So you're presenting that Wednesday morning. So after that, you kind of can take a breath. But, but Sunday, Monday, Tuesday nights are, they're, they're long. I used to think college, being a college coach would be cool until I got here. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> golly. No, it, it, is, it is rewarding. It is for sure. I mean, there's, there's things, um, um, just the relationships that you build and the people that you get to help. And uh, I got a call yesterday uh, from Jalen Walton, who was a running back at Ole Miss, and he's wanting to get into coach. So, I mean, it's just it, – it's endless, you know, and all, all the, uh, the success. And m- most of the time the way it happens is – uh, they don't say anything to you um, while they're there, but mm. maybe four or five years after the fact, they'll call and say, "Hey, coach, appreciate you doing this, or appreciate you saying this. I still, I still do this. Uh, I still remember you saying this." And it's not usually about football; it's about something else. And that's that's one of the things I miss is Friday nights. We would all, you know, I probably were supposed to be meeting, but we were in there talking like. Because we were talking about connection. That was our big deal mm-hmm. last year was just mm-hmm. connection, just trying to get to know each other. So that was one of my favorite parts is just hearing everybody's story. Because to me, the more you know the person next to you, the harder you're going to play. Absolutely. And so I think that's a uh, – I thought that was a cool, cool And I think thing. that's definitely carried over this year, especially with our offensive line. Cause 1,000%. Yeah, it's pretty much everybody that's playing now was here last year. So I feel like me, said Warren, Broderick, Trust are like best friends. And it's just like – we got there. We never you get got, arguments. You got a piece in that too. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a, it's a, shoot, especially in that position because you don't get. Yeah. Like we try to make it. There are no stats, but we try to make them up. Like we try. To make oh yeah, up. we have a board in there. That we, <laughs> you are really. We go through like knock that. We have a like leader in knockdowns, leader in pins. Um, he has penalties up there, sacks up there, pressures up there. So that's, that's awesome. I remember my uh, so back in high school, our O line coach used to uh, do a thing where whoever – he included the tight ends on this, thankfully, but it was the whoever had the most pancakes um, would – he would take them out to get burgers and all-you-can-eat fries mm-hmm. the next Thursday night. And so me and our right tackle, I mean, just every game, which we had so many double teams that we just flattened kids at every week. It was us two going to eat burgers and fries every Thursday night. It was awesome. Um, speaking of – miss, so – question about uh because you're now retired hanging out with family uh, a couple questions about that so what kind of led you into uh taking a step back what was uh um so i, I mean it was a long process i think um uh, i was uh had to so again family was the reason i did it mm-hmm. but but again i was very fortunate i've been very blessed in my career uh had the opportunity to be a head coach in this league um obviously a lot of um, very impressive. That's a Bible app, Harrison. Just so you know. yeah, sorry, so, guys. Yeah, came up, but that was good. <laughs> Verse of the day. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Uh, but, turn, turn this off. No, you're good. But that, that's uh, but family family was the reason uh, for sure. Uh, but again, financially, uh, I've been blessed and I was fortunate to do that. So as I, we, we, and then we went and we won a national championship here last year and so I've been, you know, financially, I was, I was very stable and uh, just had the opportunity. You know, Harrison's 14. He's here. I got another one that's 11, Cooper. And um, so I just wanted to have the opportunity to to be a dad and spend time with them. And, uh, you know, you don't get do-overs at that. Um, so I just – I'd had a good run. And uh, I really felt like here at Georgia that we had recruited well. The, the, um, the room was in a great situation. Uh, we had just won a national championship. So I felt like uh, we were leaving a place better than we found it. Like we came here and we, you know, we kind of kind of got, got things back because that's all Kirby cared about. My, one of my first visits was flying in to see Tate on this mm-hmm. yellow helicopter that we flew in. I remember on. that. And uh, stayed, awesome. there, stayed there all day, played basketball at YMCA, and then ate his mom's corn bread. You beat me in horse. <laughs> huh? You beat me in horse. Oh, dude, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
You can't shoot. Yeah, there's no, yeah, no shock in that one. So, yeah. so we, again, we just left the place better than we found it. So I just I felt like it was I felt like it was the the right time. Yeah. And, uh, what do you miss? Uh, what do you miss most about it? I miss I miss the relationships, and I and I think uh, that, and I, you know you miss the locker rooms, the relationships, the uh, just the the bond, and I think that's the. That's the part that you miss the most, especially like big games. I, I got a chance to go to Oregon. I went to the Tennessee game, um, so I think that that's the part that you miss the most, especially when you're out. And so you got to remind yourself, okay, why are you doing this? You know, yeah. why? Because you definitely do miss that. And I'm a I'm a passionate guy. Like yeah. uh, that's just mm-hmm. that that's that's who I am. And uh, probably my biggest strength, but also my biggest weakness uh, is just, I'm, care, just yeah. I'm, a, I'm I'm emotional guy. I'm a passionate guy, and that's but that that's the parts that you miss. But I'm also have the opportunity to do some things that I wouldn't, I wouldn't have. Yeah. And then there are several moments that I have with uh, wife, kids, um, that that you don't you don't get back. Absolutely. So I think uh, I can't believe this knucklehead's about to be driving here pretty soon. That's right? crazy, so, dude. Golly. Uh, so it's just it happens it happens fast, and uh, you don't you don't get do overs. So it's uh, but I'm, I'm excited, and I'd be lying if I said I didn't miss certain things. But yeah. you just got to remember, you know, why why you're doing what you're doing, and kind of the the positives and the negatives. Speaking of missing things and passion, dude, your pregame high speeches were the, I mean, goaded. Absolutely. <laughs> best of all. You guys, should, if you ever need to get pumped up for something, get this guy to come to your house. And get, get you going. <laughs> I'll never forget. Was it, was it halftime of the Natty or was it before the, one of your best ones was either, I think it was either the Michigan game or the Natty. And it was just, you get going and you just, oh, you laid out there and it just, Get yeah. you hard, get you mm-hmm. going. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah, it's uh the, no, it's just but though the, anytime it comes from the heart, I think when you're speaking and it just mm-hmm. it just comes out like it doesn't doesn't happen. Um, it's just like it's not planned. It's not it just kind of just kind of rolls. Yep, kind of comes out. So heck yeah, I love it. You man, we miss you a lot. You were a uh, dang good coach. But uh, mm-hmm. speaking of last year, your first national championship. Mm-hmm. What was your favorite part about that run? Uh, from the coaching side of it, um, so I, I was a head coach at my alma mater, and I know how hard it is and the challenges that you have. There's a lot going on, a lot to manage. I was just, I was excited the way Kirby kind of stuck to his guns. Um, he built the program the way he wanted to build it: old school, tough <laughs> defense, run the ball. Like, Tuesday, like, Wednesday was. Yeah, I mean, Bloody Tuesday, team run, and to see, like, like who, was, who it was against mattered. And in the fourth quarter, like, you saw that come to life. That's the truth. Like, and that was by far my favorite part because we, we had a plan, and that's what we were going to do, and that's what we did, and we stuck to it. And you just, you just saw it, like, in the fourth quarter, like, you saw, you saw it happening. Like, mm-hmm. Uh, and I always try to say that, like your job during the week is to make the game come to life on the field in practice. Like that's a great as, as, mu- as much as you can get like the game to come to life, that's what you want to do. And that's and you could see like the vision, you could see the toughness, like we're running counter, we're running inside zone. And it was just like we we, we had dang, we dang. had won like we had won the physical battle. And like mm-hmm. and, and it was very evident to everybody that was watching. And like we didn't do it by like running around, throwing it. Like we played defense and we ran the ball and we won a national championship that way. And that was his vision. And I thought that was uh, thought that was really cool. That was my favorite part mm-hmm. for sure. Playing definitely it sticks out. Like the Missouri game, we came out there and Missouri's defense was came out Shoot busting us in the mouth. Man. And we're like, okay, I kind of had to take a step back. And Coach Martin Locker was like, composure, like we're a fourth quarter team. Yeah. And then the fourth quarter, I think we had like 125 yards rushing or something like that and kind of just took yeah. the game over up front. And then you kind of look back on it and you're like, okay, yeah, we really did th- do that on Tuesday. Yeah. Well, and that game was crazy because in 20... 20? 2020. Yeah. When we went there, it was code restrictions, so the stadium was basically empty. It was cold. It was, it was like freezing rain. Our we heater did, our heater mm-hmm. blew up on Call the side. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I do. I didn't think about that. Golly. <laughs> that, put, that place was I was like, that's, that's probably not a great omen for this game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so and then, I was out there with the centers, and all of a sudden I saw a fire come over the side. I was like, that's probably not a great omen. <laughs> not a good sign. That place got rocking. Dude, yeah, yeah so we, when we come back this year, and, you know, the student section is right behind our bench, my, and it was. Oh, my. When he, do you jump off? I think you jumped off sides. Oh, right? yeah, I jumped off sides. We ran And out. the place. 
end up changing that, but probably did. Yeah. 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 Sorry, mom. <laughs> Sorry, I just got to talk. But yeah, me and Warren McClendon get to talking about who are we going to? Who are we going to? Yeah. Ready? There we go. There I go. Yeah. I look up. I'm like, God. <laughs> the entire the first three drives, we were backed up into like so there it's like a horseshoe there. Yeah. And right in front of where all their fans are, the closed side. And we couldn't hear a thing. We're like we, this place is supposed to be that loud. <laughs> like, what's going Dude, on? It was, and we came out after half, and it was even louder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was crazy. Remember seeing? So there was somebody on the, not the someone tweeted out, and Barstool kind of pushed it to where they're like, if if Missouri wins this ball game, I'll pay everybody's tab at this certain bar. Did you guys? It was Big Cat. Yeah. And uh, Aaron Murray like quoted it was like, you might want to go if they just cover. And dude, they almost and they almost did it. And he was like, I'll I'll pay like a thousand dollars worth of it to. To the bar. He was freaking out. Dude, I, dude that's a so lot of money. He was going to cover the tab until like closing time. I don't remember if it was 12 a.m. or 2 a.m. or whatever it was. But then he like, because it was so close, he offered, he paid like $2,000. That $2,000 was gone in 10 minutes. And he's like, if had I not done that, like he would have been bankrupt. So that's saying something. Like it, he, I remember hearing the backstory of it and it was yeah. incredible. Man, that game was something else. I mean, they composure because whatever happened with Jalen and their defensive line before the game, they all got that was into crazy it. too on the field. Like Jalen got the bright idea of walking right through their defensive line, warming up. They get the you hear about this? each other. I didn't know. I didn't know. So yeah, so, so Jalen Carter is walking, decides to walk right through their defensive line and offensive line, like warming up. Of course, they start running their mouths. So their defensive line comes out on fire, and our whole offensive line's like, whoa. Like, well, and back up a little bit. So pregame, we run out of the tunnel. Everybody's going down and taking a knee and pray. And so we're all praying. I'm, I'm praying. And then I get up to look up, and all I see is Jalen, like, walking towards their sideline. And then a sea of just, like, 50, like, uh, support staff red shirts just, just come screaming down the field to, like, grab him and, like, pull everybody back. That was the game that they took two yeah. cheap shots at him, and he, he yeah. sprained his MCL. Yeah, so we definitely did not match their energy coming out. Yeah, yeah. But, but got, you know, stay composed. Mm-hmm. Got her done. What – uh. Who would you say your your favorite or you know your early coaching career was your um kind of not your idol but the guy you looked up to the most and wanted and wanted to be like cuz you I mean you early early in, my, and, early in my coaching career yeah um you know I, I mean coach cut is my mentor for sure uh, yeah. he's the one that taught me into getting started um kind of brought me under his wing I worked for coach cut 11 years mm. uh so we were together Ole Miss Tennessee and Duke, uh, but just uh, he's just a, he's a he's a mentor to me. So he's a guy that I look up to. I think he 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 does it the right way, and just as a good he's a good person. He's very very wise. He he always mm. puts the players first. He's hard on them, uh, but he always puts the players first. And just uh, just I learned a lot. And um, you always kind of know who you look up to especially when you become a head coach because like when you stand in front of the team and you start talking like a lot of the things like that he had told like a lot of stuff that i had learned comes out but but what you end up doing is you end up taking the best of all the people that you work for mm, that's a great like point. you know like um like i worked for coach o for a year he did a lot of cool things and well, yeah so he he did that I got some good stories oh, for later yeah. uh and, after dark <laughs> yeah you got some good stories for later but yeah so he, he so i got some some stuff from him, and then I went. Uh, I was with Panunzio, mm. and he's uh, he had he had some good stuff. And then, and then uh, I was with Coach Fulmer, who had. I mean, he was an offensive lineman that was a head coach. So I thought that was cool at the time because yeah. there wasn't very many of those. Not very common at all. Uh, so I was around Coach Fulmer and just you know seeing him run the meetings, and then uh, back back with Coach Cut. And then I came back and was with uh, Coach Freeze for uh, six years. Yeah, so it's just uh, it's been uh, it's been a, a good ride, and you end up taking the best from everybody you're around. That's a great point. And uh, sometimes you learn what you want to do, and sometimes you learn what not to do, uh, just through experiences. And and uh, but I thought that I mean it's just a it's good, but just the relationships. That's the in the journey. That's the stuff that um, that you miss the most. Is, is yeah, absolutely. Is, is that so, I'll never forget uh, Coach Cut when he was at Duke. My uh, my senior year, he came up to the school, uh, my high school at Kennesaw Mountain. And, I mean, you know how a lot of those guys just come up, say hello, shake your hand, good to see you, whatever, leave. Never forget, he came and, and sat in our coach's office, and we talked for an hour. 
and it, talk about wise, like just pouring out wisdom, not even about football, just life. Yeah. And I was like, this dude is real. Yeah. And I just, he was awesome, man. He was, uh, That's him. he's retired now, right? He's, he is. He, well, he's not retired. He works for the Southeastern conference. That's right. Uh, That's so right. he works. He's kind of, uh, Greg Sankey, he's, I don't know if he's right hand man, but he's kind of the li- liaison to all the head coaches. Okay. Uh, which is a great job. Perfect job for him. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a perfect job yep. for him. All right. So we're going to transition into our second uh, segmented segment. Yeah. Segmental, se- uh, episodal <laughs> segment. Um, episodal episode. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. So this one is called our Real Talk Tear Talk. So we're going to go best college Take football. Take look nervous. What's this one? Me and Goody just argue about this. Oh, okay, all right. We never agree on anything on this. Right. I'm always right. You He's always wrong. That's all that matters. On this is me and him agreeing on on something. Right. Yeah, I'm always right. You're always wrong. That's how it stands. His, okay, oh, so for on. example, his we did last week. We did Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, okay. and two of his answers were for the day after Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving food. It's not Thanksgiving Day food. It's Thanksgiving Wait, food. What did you say he was? He was the king of the day after Thanksgiving. I mean, that's yeah. all. You wanted sourdough bread was like. Yeah, okay, so, all right, hold the hold on. Jesus, that's just not we, 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 we went Thanksgiving, not the day Put after. Put your imagination. Whatever your, whatever your imagination, just keep it. We went, we went Thanksgiving Day foods, and you went the day after Thanksgiving Day foods. Listen, so, was this, who, who was on that episode? Was it Specialist? Yeah, Specialist, because Brett was talking about what he was looking Listen, for. Listen, we had a line on the episode before when we did favorite tailgate foods. Best tier, I mean, best uh, just content we had all year. I mean, everybody agreed that every answer was perfect. When the fat kids come to the room, you, there's no bad food talk. So no, it was awesome. It got me hungry. Basically, so we did Thanksgiving foods, and I, my first one was a thing that my dad grew up eating it with his family. It's called broth and toast, and you do it the morning after Thanksgiving. So you save the turkey broth, see, do some stuff with it, homemade sourdough bread, butter it, toast it in the oven, take it out, and you pour the broth on top of the toast, okay. and then you just you, you eat it, and with he, no meat or. You can you, like I did. I do eggs and stuff on the side, okay. but but like, the stop shaking. Then you went leftovers. Yeah, Thanksgiving food is better the day after than it is the day of. The leftovers are always better. And then you tried to tell me mac and cheese wasn't a Thanksgiving food. It's not. It should be long on every table when there's a big meal. There's no place for it on Thanksgiving. <laughs> <You're wrong. laughs> there's not. What's your opinion? Uh, do I'll, you have Do you have I'll, mac and cheese on Thanksgiving? Absolutely. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> do y'all have mac and cheese every Thanksgiving? Thank you. Did y'all yeah. not? No. Yeah, I wouldn't show up to your house for. <laughs> <laughs> Harrison, uh, do you like that? Do you like mac and cheese? Okay, yeah. Everyone loves mac and cheese. Are you kidding me? You don't like mac and cheese? Hey, he's a he's oh, a little boy. Oh, I stand corrected again. Man. That was because you brought. That was because you brought him up here. Right. And all yep. that deal. Out of boy, I like it. <laughs> so uh, basically. We never agree. <laughs> but so back to our this 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 episode, we're gonna do best college football rivalries. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you've been in some good ones. The way it works is we each get three options. You're tier one, tier two, and tier three. So one, two, and three. Okay. But once someone says it, you can't take it. So let's say I say Georgia, Florida. That that's off the table. Okay. So uh, since you're our guest, we'll let you go first. We'll go one, one, okay, we'll, one. For sure, we'll, we'll go Egg Bowl. For okay, sure. there it is. Yeah, that's Ole that. Miss, Mississippi State. Okay, Tate. That's, that's, that's tier one. It's, I have to go the Iron Bowl because <clears throat> I've been to two of them. And until the Tennessee game that we played in, it was the loudest game I've ever been to in my life. I mean, unreal. I, I went the year that Auburn won it at Auburn, and then I actually fell asleep at it when I went to the one at Alabama. It was the day you fell asleep at it? Oh, Annabelle's got a video. I'm sitting there like this. <laughs> just out. Did you all seen that picture of Gronk at Ohio State on one of his mm-hmm. visits? Like the, I oh, mean, have you seen this picture? He, he's probably <laughs> still drunk. He's picture. got like a zip up jacket that's like halfway up. His oh, hair is all over fun. on the like just off to the side, and he's on the sideline pregame. He's just like this. <laughs> like, it's, it's a bad deal. Yeah, I have, I have not seen. Oh, that. it's a crazy picture. Okay. Um, Oh, I want to. Take Rattler. Are y'all seeing this? No. That's it. All right. Um, mm, I was definitely going Iron Bowl. That's a great answer. Egg Bowl is good too. Um, Texas, Oklahoma. Red Red Road. Red, Rob, Red, Red, Red River. River. Red River. Yeah, there you go. Red, Red is Road. It, Red is Red. it a showdown or is it Red River? Rivalry? It used to be the shootout. 
But they canceled that, I think. Now it's like just of course the Red, River, Red River rivalry. Rivalry. There you go. Yeah. Say that three times. Oh, okay. God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Give us your uh, your second top college football rivalry. I mean, Michigan, Ohio State. Mm. There it is. That, that, was my, nice. that, that was my second, too. I, I, I struggle to go out of the South, but I, I mean, yeah. I, I think it's, I think it's, uh, I just, I watched that game uh, Saturday. So, yeah, I think that's pretty good. How about, why was that <clears throat> game a noon kickoff? It was awful. It was awful. I wanted to watch it. The Big Ten, Big, big Noon kickoff. But I, I, yeah, it's just, we're, I didn't even know we're playing tech. Yeah. And I'm like, I look up there. Like in the corner, like the stadium where they have the scores, yeah. And I'm like, hold on, they're playing. Yeah. Oh, I've been a good one to watch, man. Yeah, but they, they mark off all the M's on campus. Thought mm-hmm. that was kind of cool. And they both have, uh, you know, they both have like they call their middle drill. Like I think they like that they they work on it like all year round. So I think that's kind of interesting. Yeah. So the year yeah. I worked at Ohio State was the 2016 game. That was like the closest Harbaugh had got. Right. That was whenever JT Barrett went for it on fourth down. Ooh, and yes. Remember, like, Harbaugh yes. lost his mind, and then we won the game. That, that was, was insane. That was insane. That was a wild one. I remember that. So that's a yeah, that's my that's my I guess that's my second tier. That's a great one. I have to go Georgia Florida, just because I feel like it's a different atmosphere than any other rivalry game. Thought you better sue mine. I'm going Georgia Auburn Deep South oldest rivalry. There you go. Bang. All right. <laughs> Give us your third and final. Third. Got to dig deep for I you. I got to start thinking. <laughs> third and final. So I, I will say this. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That was not. awesome. <laughs> oh, was awesome. Uh, Harrison, thanks for that. Um, so that was gold. So. One thing I did not know when I, the two years I worked at Tennessee, I did not realize how big. The third Saturday in October, the Tennessee Alabama. Mm. Right. Was, that was my next one. I did not, but I, you know, I coached in that two years. I and I had, you know, just I was coming over. I didn't, I didn't realize how big a game that was. But Coach Former was like, "You're not a volunteer until you beat those red-shirted bastards." And I was just like, "Okay, it's on." And uh, cigar so, showdown, uh, baby. Like that's a big game uh, for Tennessee. No, but we were on the staff. There was a, well, I guess that was 06, I think it was the last time that they beat them before this year. Mm-hmm. Was it really? Yeah, I mean, I was. It's so, a wow. That was uh, Eric Ainge was our quarterback, and mm-hmm. we had a, we had we had a pretty good team, a really good defense too. So, wow, was that the it's back when I was a big Tennessee fan? No, was that the block? Was there a block field goal in that game? No, no, no. no I can't remember. I, it was a pretty close game, but we ended up. Yeah, that's crazy. That was the last time besides this year. Him bringing that up kind of reminds me of like what Coach Munkin says. Like he's talking, we're playing Georgia Tech. He's like, this is a rivalry game, but. Y'all don't see it as a rivalry game because yeah. y'all don't lose this game very much. He's like, you don't realize it's a rivalry until you beat them or until they beat you. And I feel like yeah. now that Tennessee just beat Alabama recently, that game's going to be yeah. big, big time. time. Big, yeah. big time. So that's tier, tier three. I like that. So Those are three good options right there. Um, I got to think. I'll go if you want to go. If you don't want to go. Kind of thing. I guess I'll just go uh, Clemson and South Carolina. Okay. That's uh, good. Yeah. That's a rivalry game now again. Dude. Yeah, it is. That was crazy. Yeah. South Carolina went on a little roll. Roll. The the season. A roll. Yeah. That was crazy. I remember we were uh, – I'm so glad they beat Tennessee. I'll yeah, say that's right. Tennessee. Tennessee. But yeah, that was uh, – Especially after we played them. I hate them. I was sitting next to Carson on the way back from uh, Kentucky, right? And we were watching the first half, and I was like, they're going to have to score 63 points to win this game. They scored 63 points. They didn't have to, but they scored 63. I was like, bang. All right, my third one's kind of like a – not a hot t- – it's not. It's a rivalry, but it's not Army-Navy. Oh, oh, that's not, nice. I think that is a rivalry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is, right? Yeah. I feel like the pageantry of it yeah. all. Yeah. I mean, oh, dude. Army, it's a great one. Army's yeah. plates in their weight room, like their 45-pound plates, they beat Navy on them. Really? Yeah. That's pretty cool. I did not know that. Like, that's uh, a sneaky third third tier. That might, that's wow. a very good tier. That is, that's that's yeah. really good. Yeah. That's yeah. twice in one episode. You're wow. proud of your you're proud of yourself. I, I just it, it, I just yourself. came to mind. I was like, let's do it. Yeah. it really that's good. uh this week is it no next week. Is it next week? The game? It's gotta be next week. Next week. I think it's next week. Yeah. Next week. 
yeah, yeah. it's always like by itself. Kind yeah. of stand alone. Oh, right? the game's so fun to watch, man. Like absolutely. So the whole triple option part of it. Yeah. yeah. That's actually who we're but behind then, in sacks in the country this year oh, is really? Army because they don't throw the ball. Yeah. How about, was it two weeks ago that all of the uh, armed services teams won every single of one of their four games? Four of them, right? Air Force, three. Three of them, no? Army, Navy, Air Force, three. They all won without completing a single pass. <laughs> that sounds really cool. Awful. How about that? They rushed for a combined like 800 and something yards and then just to come off the ball, just crawling every play. Pound and ground, <laughs> baby. Pound and ground. Like, historically, it's probably, like not recently, but uh, USC and Notre Dame has like, yes. had some really good games. Like, yes. Like, I was texting my buddy, uh, JD Bertrand. He's one of the captains. And he was like, after playing playing USC, he was like, Caleb Williams is a dude. I was about to say, I feel like USC, UCLA, that game was. Yeah. Well, no, okay, but listen to this. So I thought the exact same thing. I went out to UCLA my junior, sophomore year with my dad. We just took a couple of trips just to. Nobody fills the stadium. Dude, it was empty. Yeah. They put tarps on. But I, I was like, I, didn't, I, I was coming out there thinking, this is like the biggest rivalry in the West. Like, this has got to be unbelievable. Dead. Yeah. Completely dead. I was like, there's no. Football just way. doesn't. There's nothing we, out there. We like. described it like this like, football in the South is your life. Football out there is just another thing to do. A coach from USC called me, and I was like, listen, like, I'm not coming out west to play football. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Then you get up north, I feel like Oregon, Washington, Oregon State. Like, they get into it. There's some good Did y'all see the Oregon player speaking of that game? The DJ Johnson kid, one of their defensive ends? Uh-uh. Yeah. Punched a kid walking off the field. Like, in the oh, back. Student. Yeah. Punched him in the back of the head. Yeah, student. I saw and that. And there's a video of it. Oh, yeah, it's happened a lot this year. He probably felt College safe football. like Jermaine Burton. Oh, yeah. It was worse than – oh, never. Jermaine hit a girl. Never mind. Like, th- he hit uh, three. That was worse. It was, yeah. He felt College like, football has been all over the place this year. It really has been. It's really been crazy. This has got to be – this is probably what your first year really being able to watch college football in a long time. It is. Um, so, like, as a college coach, like, the best – like, everybody wants the late games. Like, But the best thing as a college coach is to play the, the early games mm-hmm. and win. And then you get to go home after you do all the recruiting and stuff. You get to go home and watch a game like stress free, like you get to watch everybody else sweat. So I've been able to do that like for the whole season. Like you just watch, and the and the days go by fast because you watch a twelve o'clock game and you eat, and then like then the next game starts. Before you know it, it's like ten o'clock at night. You're like, what? What happened? What have I been doing all day? I mean, what's your so setup at the house for watching? Yeah, games? what's your go to? So like, you I wake got, up Saturday morning. Well, what are you doing? Okay, so I got a couple different. So upstairs, like. I have a awesome. TV over here, a TV over here, and then there's a TV on the like on the little patio. So if you position yourself <laughs> correctly, you can see all That's three. That's awesome. Like, but you have to position yourself correctly. And then in the basement, I kind of got a little set up mm-hmm. down there as well. I kind of just want to go watch watch a game. I will go do that. But but we're, we're, we're probably upstairs and kind of position myself for the three. Um, so That's awesome. So Saturday, I can't wait to be able to do that. Oh, yeah, I know. This Saturday, I dropped off Harrison and Cooper and Ashley at the game. Uh, Harrison and Cooper went in as recruits, and then Ashley, I think, was with Mary Beth, or as she went to the game. And then, I think Annabelle told me they were there. Yeah, and then so then I came back to Athens Country Club in like the little men's grill, and there's TVs everywhere. Oh. So I had Clemson, South Carolina, Georgia, Georgia Tech, and then the Michigan, Ohio State, all, and there was like two people in there. I was like. Spreaker. Oh, dude, that's <laughs> awesome. I can't wait to do that. Yeah, but, I, but I didn't, but I didn't want to drive awesome. all the way. Home. I didn't want to drive all the way home, uh, you know, in the traffic and then have to come back because mm-hmm. I would have to pick them up right after the game was over. So I ended up just watching. Did you play some golf? I did not no. play golf. I did not. God, that's awesome, man. That sounds fun. That's something I look forward to. Um, I think I have that so conversation once a weekend. We, we like, do. I can't we, wait. We talk about it a lot. Just being able to sit there and, like, go tell Enjoy. me. Yeah, it, it's How was uh, the tailgate? I, me, I'm, I'm not a like. I guess the food part would be good, but I, I'm I would rather just go to the game with people that you know. Get it, like I've been to the box a couple times. I, I, I don't know. As a coach, you don't want to go sit in the stands, mm-hmm. like because everybody's got something. So everybody just, I just know. Oh, yeah. I just can't. I, I don't it's enjoy awful. it because of that, and uh, so. Yeah. I would, I would, I would actually rather stay home and watch it. Uh, me personally, my dad I feel the exact same way. My dad got it. So the week when we played Florida, they were off. So my dad got to come down the Friday before, and he got to go tailgating. 
And I think it made him contemplate quitting coaching. So he kept doing that. <laughs> Let me, I got to find this picture for you. Get a kick out of this. Oh, Dude, your man. dad's mustache, speaking of, is absolutely rocking right now. It's something. That, that man is something else. Where is this picture? <laughs> no way. Dude, that is <laughs> awesome. That's what I Yes. Das boot. <laughs> Living life, baby. Yeah. Living life. Oh, yeah. man. Dude, that's gold. Then he called me yesterday, I think it was, and Annabelle was with me. And he said, Annabelle? We're about to see how, many, how big they they give you beers at the events. I was like, no, what are you talking about? He said, I'm going to find the biggest beer they have there. I was like, you go for yeah, it. It looks like he found it. So. <laughs> that's awesome. Is it Railhead? Is that it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's his nickname, Railhead. And also, if you're going to his house, it's his Wi-Fi password as well. So. Mm-hmm. Is it what actually? About, what about the cooking? Pancakes? Uh, no. His mom, like, and I don't know if this is a Thanksgiving food, but his mom's cornbread should be like it is for not. There's something she does with the butter that's like puts it on a whole another level. So your mom's I, cornbread, your dad's pan. I, I gotta come. The apple food. cake, man. We had that for Thanksgiving. Yeah. So, but right. her cornbread, I mean, it, it was it was phenomenal. It was it was big time. Coach Smart actually like in the middle of the conversation back hold on, go over there and get him another piece of water. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, it was. I, I it think was, in the spring we can take an episode on the road. That actually yeah. be pretty awesome. I should get. I, I think we should just bring a griddle right here and have old Dean make them live. That was <laughs> <laughs> right here. Chad, one of our offensive line was like, "Hey, can we do an episode where I like I grill out on set?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure. I mean, you want to? Absolutely." Chad's just looking for an excuse to show he can grill. <laughs> this is Lindbar right here. This is the problem is, hold on, real quick. The problem is with him and Chad's grilling when they grill steaks. They don't even grill. They just turn the grill on, sizzle, sizzle, done. And it's over in thirty seconds. So pretty much wrong. Mm-hmm. That's terrible. Well, so what would you do today? Like, how, oh, they call your call it, call your calls them and tells them that they oh, that's need, awful. need them rare. That's awesome. So they had like this little small little I don't know tin foil. Yeah. Put it on the plate. Like thank you. Gone about my day. Oh. Speaking of, that's the best chocolate milk ever. It's unbelievable. Oh, it's oh, it's unbelievable. You, did we have the the cattleman? People that bring the steak, potatoes, and once ice a year. Cream. Yeah, once yeah. a year. Yeah, I had the cattleman, but I don't remember the chocolate milk. Oh, the chocolate oh. milk is. So they have Cattleman's chocolate milk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they have their own brand of chocolate. Right. Milk. I think I drink about it. Right, okay. Just Four comes out chocolate. Like it's just straight chocolate. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Amazing. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, you did. I'm just thinking about like you know the Sunday conversation with mm-hmm. um, Caleb Preston. Yeah, but the guy in the back who just sits and eats ice cream. Mm-hmm. That's what's yeah. Money balls. That's what it's going to be with like somebody who's like grilling. They're just like sitting in the background. That's like, actually a great. Yeah, that's a great the idea. Whole time, I'm just gonna, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just back there. That'd be good. Yeah. Limburg. Will be good at that for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, He's just looking for an excuse to grill. Yeah. Well, Coach Luke, we appreciate yeah, you. No, thank you all for having boys. me. Enjoyed it, sir. Yes, sir. Yep, it was awesome. You're the man. Appreciate you. All right. Oh, I'm getting old. Yeah.